the Hybrid Cockpit Channel, episode number one. We talk about flight simulation and virtual reality and how we do that in a Boeing 737. So my name is Michael and I'm going to introduce you into the software, the hardware, butt kicker, Oculus Rift and some woodwork and all the things that we have done here. I am now in the hybrid cockpit, so this is basically the place where I spend a lot of time and it's nothing else than what you would expect from some stickers and some woodwork. So the two things that are really worth to mention to simulate a Boeing 737 is a proper joke. For that I use the GoFlight 737 uh, Pro Joke system and I use some other things but let me grab the camera to show you around. That means I am sitting um, I'm sitting in a play seat. So the play seat has some nice features first of all because you can just slide it around. That means there is a handle here and I can adjust uh, my position so that I'm really sitting nicely in the 737. The next cool thing is SciTech Rudo pedals. See them here? They are pretty good and they are adjustable in the angle. So the angle that you see here is the 737 angle. So they are really cool and what you see here is part of the play seat. As you see, the joke is mounted nicely to that rack that comes with the play seat. Um, the third most important thing, just to give some power to the airplane, is the throttle. I use a product from Throttle Tech South America. You can see that here. It's a very well-made throttle. Um, it, most of it comes uh, as wooden parts, but for a Boeing 737 it's important to have um, the both throttle levers, the thrust reversers, the speed brake. The parking brake and the fuel levers for both engines. As you can see, they work pretty good. And on the other side, of course, flaps. And they are, as you can see, rested. Yeah. So you need a little bit of power to operate it. Now, what you see behind it is the FMC, and the FMC is just a sticker. So is the rest of my whole, uh, let's say, cockpit. Even the overhead panel is a beautiful sticker mounted to my uh, roof. And even here, that's nothing else than wood. I can pull it away. There is a there is a cupboard underneath it, which is pretty handy to maybe let the um, virtual uh, reality controllers have a nice point to rest um, yeah and next to it is maybe the most important thing that we need to run the whole show it's a uh, i7 8700 coffee lake um, it comes with uh, 32 uh, gb of uh, ram and it has a 1080 ti geforce um, graphic card um, graphic processing unit with 11 uh, MB of uh, GB of power. Um, all right, so that's it from here. Now let's um, get out of this thing and I show you some more details. All right, from here, what you can see is the whole cockpit is mounted on a wooden pallet. Um, I got it for free, I got two of them, and um, it basically ensures 
that I can mount things like the rudder pedals onto um, yeah, a wooden basement. The other good thing um, of this pallet is that you see here the butt kicker. The butt kicker is, is nothing else than a bass shaker and this bass shaker shakes the bass. So it's mounted to the seat, the seat is mounted to the pallet. That means if this thing shakes, the whole thing shakes, even the throttle shakes, even the joke shakes, like in a real plane, when you touch the ground, everything shakes. That's what I like. All right, what else is worth to mention? Um, you see, it's just for one pilot and that makes perfectly sense because if you fly in virtual reality at the moment, you are one pilot. Now, this is the pilot's eye to just give you an idea. Yeah, this is what you see. You see the joke, you see the pedals, you see the throttle and yeah, basically here you have some handy things at hand. Um, when you are in virtual reality, you see nothing. You just feel it. And to give you a simple uh, example of what is cool in virtual reality, because if you are in the 737 cockpit, you see the 737 cockpit in virtual reality. This is your hand, but at the moment you have everything configured. You just need to lay down the controller and you lay it down on the middle console, on the pedestal. And the funny thing is, in virtual reality, it lies at same place because it has the same height. You see it all the time and it's really brilliant and you can concentrate on left hand, right hand and feet. Okay, now if we move on, basically what you see here is just, I, I put a desk behind it just to mount the things. And this desk is, yeah, it's a bit uh, cut down so that I can have enough space to move around with my hands. And the good thing is all the things you see here are in the same distance than in a real 737 cockpit. That means if you touch something here in virtual reality, yeah, there would be something in virtual reality as well. And if you wanna hit the overhead panel, you hit it at the same spot like you hit it in virtual reality. That gives you the feeling that you are really in a cockpit because the boundaries in virtual reality are really there. Okay, anything else? Now I put some cable management here. Um, I put some uh, external sound speakers here with the bass shaker. Um, I put some yeah high tone boxes here. The high tone boxes basically um, give us the sound of external and internal airplane. So it's rather cool and. Now let's get into the plane. I adjust my seat and I check if I have the right position and then I basically jump into VR using the Oculus Rift S. It's just beside me and as you can see on the screens that is basically what you see when you're in the cockpit. You have the same overhead panel you have the same screens like this. And what is really cool, you have the same throttle. Um, all the things that work here work in VR as well, because it's explained with native VR and Oculus Rift as it's supported very well. So I would just jump into it and show you some more things. All right, basically my uh, view is uh, calibrated. That would be the one that I want to show you because now you can see here my hands are on the joke and on the screen you see the same joke and it moves exactly as one. So that's really cool because it's basically one to one uh, simulated, which is really cool. The same thing we have here as I showed you here is the throttle. It will give me a warning now because the parking brake is not released. The reversers, they work. You hear the bass shake working. You see here, the 
slaps, levers, working, speed brakes, and now if I get outside of the plane, I would see that maybe fully extended. By having this hand controller, basically I can adjust my position in the cockpit, but I can also touch it. You see here the controller is in my hand, you see it on the screen, and whatever I do, for example, I operate now the overhead panel, make the landing lights on. Switch seatbelt sides on. Let the crew know that we are going to start. Yeah, nice. And whatever switch I move is basically on the same position here in this room. So that means here, if I am on the autopilot, it's exactly here where the boundary is. So, for example, if I want to grab the handle here or the landing here, or if I want to operate. The FMC gets right at the place and it gives me haptic feedback. That's pretty cool about it. And just for the fun of it, let's set um, basically a flap setting that is good. Let's put it to five. Speed brakes up. Release the parking brake. I do it over the hand controller. Then I don't need it anymore. Let's assume we don't need the autopilot. I lay it down here and it basically lives here exactly on the pedestal so I can see it here and it really lies there so it's easy to find nothing to guess and nothing to be unsure about. So yes, I hope I have the, the good uh, setting for the start. I just give some uh, 98. Yeah, we get some warnings.